Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but have not subscribed yet, please do so, along with hitting that thumbs up button for me and dropping your comments. Love the comments. Even when you disagree with me, I learn something, so it helps me. And uh, of course, the encouragement is uh, beneficial, beneficial, especially on a night like tonight where the Knicks hosted the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James, who uh, ended up with a triple double tonight. And he passed Mark Jackson and Steve Nash in all time assists. I believe he's now fourth. Uh, yeah, it was a tough, uh, tough loss. The game went to overtime. I have a lot to say about this game. And I have a lot to say about the end game strategy of this New York Knicks team that Tom Thibodeau implements. I think I'm going to show you some stats that might uh, blow your mind, actually, because it might be counterintuitive to what you think you see with your own eyes. But there's a lot more happening actually on the court, which is why the Knicks kind of end why the Knicks end up losing a lot of fourth quarter games. So before we get to that, before we get to that, uh, I want to show you the last play of the game right now because a lot, the last play of regulation. Let me be very clear. Last play of regulation. Wait, hold on. Before we get to that, we're going to do this. Knicks lost 129-123. Might as well tell you guys what the actual final score. Uh, they were uh, cooked in overtime. This game went to overtime. Uh, outscored uh, by five, uh, by six, obviously, uh, in overtime. And it was just a last second uh, bucket by uh, quickly there at the last second. So it would have been uh, eight points. <sighs> Tom Thibodeau decided to play Emmanuel quickly 21 minutes straight. Yep. And he decided to play Isaiah Hartenstein 23 minutes straight. Now I get it. I get it. They were both actually two of our best players on the court. But come on, bro. Got to be a little more creative than just, I'm going to just keep playing them. <laughs> I mean, this we've been talking about diminishing returns. Diminishing returns. Well, we're seeing it with Randall and RJ. They're playing more minutes than anybody right now, pretty much. Uh, RJ did not even... RJ only played six minutes or five minutes in the, in the fourth quarter. Uh, which is fine. I, I don't have a problem with benching a player who got off to a terrible start and wasn't playing a, a, a good game offense uh, defensively. Defensively, let's, put, let's be very clear. Because, you know, Thibs always says, hey, if you're not contributing offensively, you can still do other things and contribute defensively. Fine. I don't have a problem with that. But you don't have to be so myopic about it. You know, it's like... In those last, in that last minute and a half, or even in overtime, we could have used RJ's fresh legs. He had only played 27 minutes by that point. And we know that RJ is has a propensity to hit big buckets. He, he has no fear, which is what you need, especially when you're going up against the GOAT, LeBron James. I mean, if you believe that he's the GOAT. Well, he, well right now, right now, he's probably best player in the NBA right now, the way he's been playing. It's unbelievable what he's doing. So it's like, get a little creative. Now, I get it. He, he went with Isaiah Hartenstein for the rest of the game over Sims, but is that really creative? Is it? Is that really pressing the right buttons at the right time? It's like a game is in constant flux. Constant flux. So that means you, your decision making, has to be also in constant flux. You need to adjust, make adjustments to put your team in the best position to win. Now I get it, the players didn't, they, they, they came out terribly in the first uh, quarter. They, I think they only scored five points for the first seven and a half minutes of this game. They were down 15-5. So it's a miracle that the Knicks were even, even got to overtime, to be honest. It's a miracle. Because you know, and, and the Lakers were pretty much fully healthy. They had AD back, Anthony Davis, uh, LeBron was there. Uh, well, actually, uh, Pat Bev did not play, but they had their two, their big two, and and uh, uh, Russell Westbrook was playing, so they were they were up for this game. They wanted to win this game, and I respect that. I totally respect that. But our coach, he he let us down. He let us down because I mean, what's the purpose of a coach? 
Let's just be really frank about it. What's the purpose of a coach? The purpose of a coach is to find those little edges to get you those wins. The little wins throughout the game and then the big win at the end of the game. Hopefully, you don't need the little the big win at the end of the game because all the little edges that you've created throughout the game get you a nice lead and you win. And we've been able to do that. But when it comes to clutch time, crunch time, Tom Thibodeau continually drops the ball. His play calling is atrocious, to be honest with you. Atrocious. I tweeted this out right before the final game, the final play of the game. There's three and a half seconds left. Let's see if Thibs can design a game-winning play. We're at home. We're at home. This is it. We can score on these guys. We can win this game right there. Let's look at it. Here we go. In fact, I'm going to put my earplug in because I want to hear. I want you guys. I want to hear what you guys hear. What uh, Jim Jackson says at the end of this play. Here we go on MSG. Four and a half seconds left. Knicks looking for the win. Randall drives in, stops. It's late. We've got overtime at the garden. And I'm surprised that it was Jalen Brunson taking the ball out. That he's your best decision maker to make the entry pass. But watch LeBron James. Knowing time is running down, he goes to double team. That's just intelligent basketball. But I thought it was going to be Brunson with the ball in his hand at the end. I thought it was going to be Brunson with the ball in his hand at the end. Randall and why not? In, Isn't that the reason we have Jalen Brunson? Because he's basically unstoppable. I'd rather have Jalen Brunson take anybody, take even LeBron one on one, than have this play. A tired, ineffectual Art, uh, Julius Randle going up against his former Wildcat teammate with LeBron James on the court coming in behind. To block the shot. Here we go on MSG. That's Four the play. play. Now, Thibs had a response to Randall this. Drives in. Thibs had a response to this, and this was it. Thanks to Ian Begley of SNY, who we love, big fans of Ian Begley here at uh, Into the Next Verse. Tom Thibodeau on last play of regulation. Quote There's three options on that play, so they have to read the defense. LeBron was on Jalen and Davis was on Julius, and depending on what they're doing, they could go either way. So there are options. That's why play is set up the way it is. You know what? We don't need an option there. The, the With three seconds left, there's only one option. Get the ball in Brunson's hands and let him cook. That's it. That's what a great coach would do. That's what a really good coach would do. That's what a good college coach would do. That's what a good high school coach would do. That's what any good coach would do. But not our coach. I'm going to back up this information here. This was tweeted out by NBA University. This is the best net rating in the clutch of all teams in the NBA. Nets are number one. We just beat. We just lost them. We just saw why. Because when you have a Kyrie who's super clutch, and I think he's the top scorer in the fourth quarter right now in the entire NBA, I, I think. I heard that stat. I haven't seen it, but that's what I heard, and I believe it based on what I saw. Nuggets, plus 18. Celtics, plus 17.7. Raptors, Pelicans and Kings, Sixers. Those are the top. The top seven teams. Look at the worst in the clutch. Pistons, obviously, they're tanking for Wemby. Spurs, they've totally, they want uh, the Frenchman. The Magic, well, they are what they are. The Hawks, that's kind of surprising, uh, you know, depend, you know, considering the, the personnel they have. And the Hornets, also kind of surprising to be that low. But, you know, execution is a big key. And look at Team 6 and 7, the two teams that faced each other tonight, the Lakers and the Knicks. And we're actually a point oh. We're, we are 1.5 better than the Lakers in the clutch, but not tonight. Not tonight. There they are. That is an indication of Tom Thibodeau's failure as a coach to not utilize the tools that he has. That's what that is. This is why I don't believe that going forward into the future, he's the answer. But we're here now. And I want to win as many games with him as the coach as we possibly can. And tonight was one of them, and he lost that game tonight. 
Yes, the players do what they do, but what is the point of the coach? What is the value of having a coach? This is why, because in these moments, he finds you those little edges to get you that margin of victory. Wasn't able to do it. This team had nothing left in the tank in that, in that overtime. They got outscored. I mean, they ended up the final score. They were a minus six, but they really were outscored a minus eight. They had no legs, nothing at the end, nothing. Now I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you something else to talk about this because one of the reasons that I think the Knicks struggle in the fourth quarter is because the team is a little bit upside down. And by that, what I mean by that is our best offensive player is also our biggest defensive liability. Now, it's the, it's the same story throughout the whole game, but when you get yourself to those last two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, one minute and a half, 30 seconds or whatever, and the other team has the ball, you can't have Jalen Brunson on the court at that end, at the very end. You have to find another way to, to play the end game strategy there. Maybe you let, maybe you, you call timeout and you let IQ run the offense defensively. And then you bring JB back in for offense. You know, you try to start managing your, your, your timeout calling so you have more timeouts towards the end of the game than, than most teams do so that you can play that situation. It's not a big deal. Other sports have relief pitchers. You bring in the guy at the end, comes in, he's the closer. You know, it just do that. In football, you have a special back who can get you that extra, that yard. When you need one yard, he gets it for you. Now, Brunson gets you the point, but he also gives up more than he gets. And I'm going to show you this right now. This, these are the, this is the fourth quarter stats for the Knicks for the entire season. Wait, these are the fourth quarter stats? No, these are the, these are the, uh, this is the, uh, the net rating stats for the full season. This is the full season right here. Jalen Brunson, his defensive rating is 116.8. This is the full season. Now, he does give you buckets on the other side. Now, net rating, defensive rating, this is the first time you're hearing about it. This is how many points are scored per 100 possessions. This is a way to even the playing field. So when you're looking at everyone's stats, this evens the playing field. Jalen Brunson is at the bottom there with 116.8, just below RJ. Look at RJ and look at Randall. And look at Reddish. So three, there are big three are in the bottom of defensive rating for this team. Now, Randall is a plus 1.7 net rating for the full season. And Jalen Brunson is a plus 0 0.2. So almost it's almost a wash with Brunson on the court. RJ is a minus 0 0.9. So that's almost one whole point less. And that is a problem. He's got he's to straighten that out. Absolutely. But the guy who has the ball in his hands the majority of the time is Brunson. It is Brunson. Now, let's look at the next stat. Now, this is just the fourth quarter. So this was the whole game. Now, this is just the fourth quarter. Here we go. Brunson is last. The net rating is, for defensive rating, the defensive rating is almost 120. It's 119.6. 119.6. So all this talk about Jalen Brunson being Mr. Clutch and all that stuff, the data doesn't show it. The data does not show it. Now, this is a minimum of players that have played 20 games for the Knicks. Number one in defensive rating is Miles McBride in the fourth quarter. He doesn't play, he's only averaging 5.1 uh, minutes uh, in the fourth quarter. Same with Isaiah Hartenstein. Shockingly, Isaiah Hartenstein is a 108.1. Grimes is third, 108.7, and quickly is fourth with 109.2. There it is. Our four starters are our worst defensive rating players in the fourth quarter. Mitch, RJ, Julius, and Brunson. Now look, RJ in the fourth quarter is a little bit better than Randall and Brunson. I found this incredibly shocking, incredibly shocking. 
Now check this out, because you're probably wondering, oh, well, that's defensive rating, but he gives us points. This is fourth quarter. Look at the net rating. The net rating is a minus 7.0 for Jalen Brunson in the fourth quarter. Only better than Toppin, who really doesn't play much in the fourth quarter, and Derrick Rose, who hasn't played in, in quite a while. You see that minus 37.8, which is probably why he's out of the rotation. Uh, you know, Jericho Sims are going to get, I'm not going to get in on that because, you know, he's young, he's learning the game, and, you know, it's up to uh, Thibs to utilize him in terms of actual uh, minutes. But everyone who has a problem with R.J. Barrett, I want you to look right there. Only one player, only one player on the Knicks has a plus net rating in the fourth quarter, and that's Miles McBride. His offensive rating is 108.8. His defensive rating is 106.8 for a, a plus 2.0 in net rating. Everyone else is a minus. Mitch Robinson. Mitchell Robinson, who is one of the top defending centers in the NBA. Right there. You can see it. Even he is a minus 3.0 in net rating. RJ is a minus 3.0 in net rating. Quinton Grimes, who we all love his defense, right? Well... He's not better than RJ in net rating. So this is just a way to quell all the RJ haters just for a second. Now, he did have a terrible game today. <laughs> so I'm not going to soft, uh, you know, play that at all. He had a terrible game. We're just talking about this is the entire season. This is the numbers for the entire season in the fourth quarter. So when Jalen Brunson's on the floor in the entire, in the fourth quarter, we're going to end up a minus seven. Right there. So this is something that Thibodeau and the coaches on this team have to figure out how to get around this, because there is no way that this team can be a legitimate playoff team if we keep losing close games in the fourth quarter to, you know, whatever kind of team. I mean, Lakers, it's hard for me to say what Lakers are. I don't even think they know what they are, but they're hoping to get into the playoffs. Uh, obviously, they have, you know, LeBron James is right now he's playing as, as well or not better than almost everybody in the NBA especially at his age which is phenomenal it's a, it's a tremendous achievement and then now they have uh, Anthony Davis back uh, it's if, he, if he stays healthy uh, he gets his conditioning back he's a little bit out of it uh, that team could end up winning some games they could string some wins together so there's no shame in losing tonight to this team but it was right there for you you had it now the one reason that you have Jalen Brunson on the floor is for his offense. So that's why it's really difficult to understand why he didn't give him the ball in those last three seconds. You managed to overcome all of this and still ended up tied. And you could have won it, but you weren't able to do it because you're too rigid in your thinking, Tom Thibodeau. This is the way I see it. You may disagree with me, but the numbers are right there. This is the full season, fourth quarter net rating numbers. Right there. There it is. Okay, so here, uh, you can see, so now we're going into the stats of the game. Uh, Randall had a rough night, though he did, put, look at, I want you guys to look at the minutes, the minutes on, on the, this team right here. 43 minutes for Randall, 44 for Brunson, 40 for Grimes, 40 for Hartenstein, 39 for uh, quickly. Almost 40 for quickly. Almost five players with 40 minutes tonight. Almost five players with 40 minutes tonight. Now you wonder, wait, I, I bet the Lakers had a similar thing too, right? Look, they only had two guys with 40 minutes. One was uh, Hachimura and LeBron James. AD played 37 minutes. Uh, Brown Jr. played 34. Dennis Schroeder played uh, 32. And then uh, Westbrook played 36. <laughs> so somehow, uh, Darvin Ham was able to spread out the minutes a little more efficiently, and that also may be why they had a little bit something extra in the tank for those extra five minutes in overtime. The plus-minus tells a bizarre story. Well, one thing I want to show you is Hartenstein had a very good game. 16 points, 13 rebounds, 7 of 10. He did take a three-point shot. <laughs> which uh, was a killer one, but I don't blame him because that's just the way that the situation ended up. Uh, quickly, only two of six from the three-point line, but 19 points for him. The game changed completely when Emmanuel quickly came into the game in that first quarter. The Knicks were struggling. He comes in, 
just sparks life into this team. And I'm beginning to think, I know there's probably people thinking, hey, maybe we should uh, start quickly over RJ. Mm, I'm starting to think otherwise. I'm starting to think maybe we should start quickly over Quinton Grimes. That's what I'm thinking. Grimes has not been enough of a presence offensively. Yes, defensively, he gives you a lot. But offensively, he hasn't been enough of an impact player, especially to start off a game. He's not there yet, and that's okay. It's only year two for him. He's played a season and a half, pretty much. He may end up coming back and being the starting uh, shooting guard, but I think at the moment, we should start Emmanuel quickly as the starting shooting guard on this team. Let's enjoy what his ball handling gives us, what his defense gives us, his energy gives us. He's infectious, and he might wake up uh, the whole team. We might get off a great, like a great start, because right now we're laboring and we're waiting until he comes into games. Just, a, just an idea to throw out there. Uh, Brunson, tremendous game offensively, thirty-seven points, thirteen of twenty-nine. He shot uh, two of seven from the three-point line. He only had one assist in that first half. He ended up with six assists. Still, with the amount of time, 44 minutes he played, the amount of time the ball's in his hands. Now, I, the Knicks were missing a lot of shots, so that could also impact uh, uh, why his assists are, are, are low. But look at Emmanuel quickly. He ended up with eight assists, and he played five less minutes than Brunson. He just shares the ball more, and the team plays better. The ISO style of play... I mean, it's fine here and there, but when that's your own, your go-to, that ball was not moving at all in that first quarter, at all. It was all just ISO, 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 and the team had no flow. And guys like RJ need to touch the ball. Even Grimes, they need to touch the ball. They were getting it, and RJ was just not effective tonight, but either was uh, Grimes from the three-point line. He did end up 6 of 12 overall, but he missed all five of his three-point shots. So that means he shot... He hit six of seven from inside the arc. And he's, he's, a, he's a really effective and dy dynamic uh, driver uh, to the basket. And he picked up three dimes. One was a beautiful behind the back, I believe, uh, to like over his shoulder to Isaiah Hartenstein. That was a huge bucket. Uh, I just want to shout out all the great stuff. Because there was some 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 really some really good stuff. I, and Hartenstein was really effective. Uh, Obi with his, uh, you know, he, got, he picked up his dime, his diamond minutes tonight. 10 once again uh one of two uh five rebounds for him not featured in the offense don't understand why he's, he's a dynamic scorer we could utilize him tremendously but nope not on this team for some reason nick shot only 20.6 percent from the three-point line 45 percent overall and somehow were able to make it limp their way in not limp their way but really make it to uh overtime uh, and we only committed nine turnovers. The Lakers, look at this. They had, uh, let's see, uh, five guys in double digits. And LeBron James, 28 points. He did need 25 attempts to get the 28 points, so not as efficient a night for him. Two of eight from the three-point line, but he ended up with a triple-double. Uh, Ten rebounds, 11 assists, and 28 points. And uh, Anthony Davis picked 27 points on 16 field goal attempts. How efficient is that guy? Damn, he got to the free throw line many times, many times. Now, look, this is the field, the team stats. This is the chart here. Uh, field goal percentage, uh, Lakers shot over 51.6%. Oh, we shot 45%. From the three-point line, though, they only shot uh, one of three, 33.3%. But like I said, four, the Knicks shot 20.6%. Total turnovers, we actually uh, were in a plus there, plus five. Rebounds, we won the rebounding war but we just could not hit a bucket in that first quarter, and that's really why the team lost. But we were able to get back in it. We had the lead even at, at, at one point. So we can say, oh, yeah, the team got off their terrible start. Uh, RJ and Randall, I think they were like three of three of 16 combined together in that first, uh, I think the first half, to be honest with you, uh, which is amazing to think that we were up by one point, and that's because of the play of offensive play of Brunson and quickly and Hartenstein and those guys 
Uh, let's see here. You can see uh, points in the paint. Uh, we even won that battle. We were a plus eight there. Uh, fast break points, almost even. Uh, turnovers we won. Steals were six each. Uh, we even have uh, more blocks. Only three blocks in this game. The Lakers only had one block tonight. And that was the uh, Hachimura one that was originally called a goaltending, and then they overturned it, which was a big, big overturning rule. I don't think there was enough conclusive evidence to show that the ball was at its apex. In fact, to me, it looked like it was just beginning to come down, but they ruled it that way, and I think that really zapped any momentum the Knicks had at that point. This was a game where the Knicks hit their free throws, and that's one of the reasons that they were able to, to take the lead back. They hit 28 of 32, 87.5%, which makes up for their lack of three-point efficiency. Knicks once had an eight-point lead, but weren't able to close it. Excuse me. So that was it. Knicks lost 129-123. It's going to be an interesting stretch of games coming up. I am curious as to what kind of team we're going to see in the next few games. If, uh, for example, let me see, who are we playing next? The Knicks are playing... Uh, da, 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 da. We're at home. I think we're, at, we're, yeah, we're playing the Heat. Oh, we're playing the Heat on Thursday. And then uh, we have a back-to-back -back on the weekend. Saturday, it's against the Clippers. And then Sunday, it's against the Sixers. So those are going to be three tough matchups for these Knicks. I, honestly, if we go two out of three, that would be tremendous. Uh, I'm hoping for that. Don't even want to look at the negative side of it. I just hope that somehow this team looks at the experience that they had tonight and they wake up. It was not a good game for Randall. You know, guys, our, our, our best players are not going to have good games every night. It's just going to happen. Uh, same with RJ. But Brunson did step up, and other guys stepped up, and the game was right there for it to be won. But our coach could not come up with the play. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this. My name is George. I am into the Knicksverse. Please drop your comments, hit the thumbs up button for me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We're trying to get to 7,000. We're very close. It'd be awesome if you could join the community. And I will see you around.